Hey guys, let's talk about Kyron Richard Horman. Kyron was born on September 9th, 2002, and he's been missing since June 4th, 2010 from Portland, Oregon. At the time of his disappearance, he was 7 years old, 3 feet 8, and 50 pounds. He's a Caucasian male with brown hair and blue eyes. He wears metal-framed eyeglasses. He is allergic to bee stings. Kyron was last seen in Portland, Oregon on June 4th, 2010. He usually rode the bus to Skyline Elementary School, where he was a second grader. The school is in the 11500 block of Skyline Boulevard in a rural area in northwest Portland, about two miles from Kyron's home in the 15700 block, Sheltered Nook Road. His stepmother, Terry Lynn Moulton Horman, stated she drove him to school because there was a science fair that day, and Kyron wanted to set up his exhibit, a display about the red-eyed tree frog. They arrived shortly after 8 a.m. and dropped Kyron's coat and backpack off at his classroom. A witness saw Terry and Kyron together at 8.15 a.m. in front of Kyron's exhibit. The bell rang at 8.45 a.m. and Terry says she left then. She said Kyron told her he was going to his classroom. He's never been heard from again. Terry reported Kyron missing at 3.45 p.m. after he failed to arrive home at 3.30 p.m. as scheduled. No one reported having seen Kyron at the school after the 8.45 a.m. bell. His teacher marked him absent after classes began at 10 a.m. She thought he was at a doctor's appointment. Because so many hours had passed since he was last seen, police launched an extensive search immediately. Over the next few days, they interviewed all of the students and staff at Skyline Elementary School and searched the school, school grounds, and the surrounding area. It was one of the largest searches in Oregon history. Kyron's loved ones described him as timid and stated he would be unlikely to leave the school to go off on his own. Kyron's parents, Kane Andrew Horman and Desiree Young, have been divorced since 2003. Terry and Kane married in 2007, but they had been together for several years before that. Terry raised Kyron in, from infancy, although he did visit with Desiree and his stepfather, Tony Young, every couple of weeks. Kane and Terry had a one-year-old daughter, Kiera Ariel Horman, at the time of Kyron's disappearance, and Terry has a teenage son from a previous marriage who was living with her parents in June 2010. Less than two weeks after Kyron's disappearance, police stopped the search and announced they had upgraded his case from a simple missing child to a criminal investigation. At the same time, they stated they didn't think Kyron had been abducted by a stranger. They focused on Terry, stating cell phone records indicated she wasn't where she said she was on the day of Kyron's disappearance. Three weeks after Kyron's disappearance on June 26, Kane moved out of the family home. That same day, Terry placed two 911 calls from her, their residence. The first one at 5.17 p.m. was classified as, as a threats call, and the second at 11.39 p.m. was classified as a child custody call. Kane was at home when either call was placed. During the following days, the police released more information to the public. A landscaper who worked for the Horman family had told investigators that about six or seven months before Kyron disappeared, Terry offered him money to kill her husband. When authorities notified Kane of this, the news prompted to him to take Kiera and move out. Police attempted a sting, bringing the landscaper to Terry's door to demand money while undercover agents watched from nearby, but Terry called 911 instead to say someone was demanding $10,000 from her. Kane filed for divorce and a restraining order from Terry, saying he and the police believed she was responsible for Kyron's disappearance in addition to the attempted murder for hire. A judge barred Terry from contacting Kane, Kyron, Kiera, and her own teenage son. Kane sought custody of Kiera and child support from Terry. He accused Terry of attempting to abduct Kiera from her from her daycare two days after the restraining order was granted, of beginning an affair with another man four days after Kane moved out, and of sharing sensitive information, including Kane's new address, with, with the man. In mid-July, Terry moved to her hometown of Rock. Roseburg, Oregon, and Kane and Kier moved back into their Portland house. Investigators questioned Terry's friend, Dee Dee Spichter, about her possible no knowledge of Kyron's disappearance. They searched her home and asked the public if they had seen Terry, her white pickup truck, or Spichter on June 4th between 9.45 a.m. and 1 p.m. Spichter stated she knew nothing about Kyron's disappearance and she believed Terry was innocent of any wrongdoing. Kane stated Terry suffered from postpartum depression after Kiera's birth and her behavior changed. In court documents, he claimed she was an alcoholic, has a personality disorder, and is, quote, severely emotionally disturbed, unquote. Kane said he believed Kiera was not safe with her mother and may have witnessed whatever happened to Kyron on the day he disappeared. Some of Terry's acquaintances reported that she was angry with Kane for making her teenage son move out of their home, which he did in February 2010, four months before Kyron's disappearance. Desiree told reporters that she had attempted to get custody of Kyron, 
prior to his disappearance and that Chiron had told her several times that he wanted to come live with her. In May 2012, Desiree filed a lawsuit against Terry accusing her of kidnapping Chiron and seeking $10 million in damages. She has asked the court to order Terry to return Chiron or say where his body is. The Hormans are now divorced. Authorities have yet to name a suspect in Chiron's disappearance in spite of their focus on his stepmother. Kane speculated Terry caused the child's disappearance in an effort to hurt him and suggested she may have had help from another individual. Both of Chiron's parents continue to hope that he is alive. His case remains unsolved. If you have any information, please call the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office at 503-823-3333 or 503-261-2847.